Farmer Matt. What? What are you doing? Uh, Grandpa broke the tires. Good morning, Riley. Good morning, Grandpa. Guess what? What? It's another day in the harvest field. It is another day in the harvest fields. Starting off with fueling combines and putting air in tires. Uh, yeah, we got a tire issue that we've been babysitting for the last three days. But hopefully we'll get caught up enough when we can actually get a tire guy out here to fix it. How's Noah? Morning, Riley. Oh, they're kicking along for another day. Yeah, yeah. So Noah's been hauling a lot of grain to the grain bins the last couple days. Um, and it's not like what it is normally, but it's it's something. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that sort of time again. It is time for the Samuelson Report. Oh, Riley, we're slowly working on the winter wheat uh, this season. And uh, I don't know, I think we got about uh, right at 500 acres we got to do yet. Cause what, what I'm reading on the little report card that your mom fixed up for us, it's you know, a little tabulation sheet's got all the acres on it. So I think we're at about 500 acres to go here this morning. So. Gotcha. We're knocking it out. We're doing doing good. I mean, not the best wheat in the world, but as dry as it's been, we still got to run over the ground. So I think that means that Tuesday we finish winter wheat, probably wait a couple days, which that might work out well because I'm going to be out of town for a couple days anyway. And then it's barley time. <laughs> Dad's project this morning, grain bin welding. So that's what I guess I'm helping out with today. This morning. Hopefully not all day. Who dared to the dark asylum of the grain bin? Heck of an afternoon. I was hauling grain. I started to notice a bit of a hissing sound from the dash. You know the hissing sound that you get when your truck's starting to supply air? Well, why the heck would it be supplying that much air just rolling down the highway without using any brakes or anything? It's because we had an air leak. We had an air leak, one of the back axles, one of the airbags, or something in there. Airbags blown. We've lost two airbags now. Anyway, here's what happens you lose one of those. Your brakes start applying. They can be very slow or they can just full on apply. In this case, it was very slow because it felt to me like, well, you know, we're still moving. I can still make power, maintain pretty decent speed on the highway. But, you know, I know something's off. I start dropping speed off. I start making a plan to pull over actually right here where I pulled over. Start pulling over here. Very loud noise. Big boom. Tire blew off the beat. Five seconds later, boom, a second one goes. I knew something was very, very, very wrong at that point in time. Sure enough, there's smoke. I pull over, there's a ton of traffic. I'm trapped in my cab. I guess I could have went out the passenger side, but there, I hung up like five or six cars on the highway just because I was going slow getting in here in the first place. They all get by, they don't stop, they keep going. Our friends here at Central Montana Propane, you know, yeah, great place to start a fire, Riley. Across from the propane. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, they noticed right away. They ran out here with fire extinguishers, called 911, got the fire department out here. We're right in Lewistown. Had about the best response time ever with the fire crew that was here. They showed up. They put out the fire. They thought the grain was on fire. They paged that there was a grain trailer fire. So that started an absolute riot. Meanwhile, I'm like, I don't know if that grain's on fire. Thank the Lord it wasn't. You know, God's good sometimes. And I think this is a pretty good outcome. A lot of times this happens, you can lose your whole grain trailer and all the grain in it. I've seen it happen once before when I was a kid. Not one of our trucks, it was, but still. 
we're pulled over in a good spot. We were able to divert traffic through here actually on the highway. That was good, but we're short a couple airbags. We've got two tires that aren't on their beats, but the truck should be drivable once they get the brakes freed up there. So that's the wrecker's job. He's here with his mechanics unit. Gonna get the brakes freed up. We're gonna pull it into the CHS lot. I owe a huge shout out to Frontline Ag, the John Deere dealer here in Lewistown. They brought a grain back out with a tractor because our local grain back is two hours away from where I'm at. That's a heck of a long response time for our grain back to come all the way down here. But we're gonna have to unload the grain. We cannot disconnect the truck from the trailer because that's a lot of weight on that trailer. It could collapse the landing gear. Um, so that's a no-no. Luckily, Dad caught me before I tried anything like that because I was I was going crazy enough that I probably would have not thought all the way through and done something about that. For now, we got to offload grain. I forgot to mention, Dad brought a, another semi-truck. It's sitting down there. So we're going to load into that, use the grain back to offload my trailer into that trailer, get the weight off. Then we can mess around with getting the trailer off or doing something with that and get the truck in for repairs. guys it's all gonna be all right but there's a little bit more damage than i originally thought when i recorded that previous clip at the scene of the uh incident with that truck so we will probably do new tires airbags all the airbags might need to redo some airlines the air valve that caused the failure so i believe it's the valve that exhausts the air out of the brake system you know when you pull out that yellow tab on the uh inside the truck to park it I think that's what caught us. That's what began to slowly fail as I was rolling down the highway. So it began to slowly fail. I began to slowly lose air more and more and more, but not enough to set off the low air alarm. If that low air alarm had gone off, I would have immediately known what was up, pulled the truck over, but I wasn't. Now with this, could I have saved the whole fire situation as well as the brakes and airbags, tires, all that. If I had looked at my air gauge and saw the air supply was starting to fall, yes, I could have. I could have prevented almost all of this. We could have went from the whole fire situation to just pulling over to the side of the road and replacing an air valve to get the truck up and going again. But that's not how things worked out. That's not how I particularly thought in that given instance, and I'll know better next time. Next time, I know the sounds that I'm going to be hearing if something like that's going to happen again, potentially, and I'll be looking at that air gauge more closely. So don't mess around with your air supply situations. If you think something's wrong, pull over right away if you can. Don't wait for that nice, convenient spot to do so. Just have to do it. Because otherwise you're starting something on fire if those brakes are applying. That's what happened. So stay safe out there, guys. And thank the Lord that what I experienced here the other day was really not that severe of a scenario. It could have been much worse. Well, Farmer Matt somehow snuck himself in the combine around noon and nobody's came to fire him yet, so I guess we're still here cutting and it's 7.30 right now. I'm not gonna complain. About a month ago, Grandpa and I went to a combine clinic hosted by Torgerson's and it's where farmers just from around the area come into the dealership 
and they just educate you on these combines that we have. And at this clinic, they were talking about this pressure float mode and how your feeder house will move up and down based off of the feedback on your header. And Grandpa and I got to looking at each other and they're like, you should look into that. We've had this combine since 2014 and never knew anything about this pressure float mode. Well, what it is, is basically, I like to think of it like a three point to where you have your draft pressure. I think that's what it's called. Uh, that's pretty similar to what's going on here. So as you can see, we set a pressure. Right now I'm running 1900 in my feeder house hydraulic cylinders. The higher the number, the higher your feeder house is. The lower the number, the lower the feeder house is. And if your header gets to pushing on your feeder house, it'll raise and lower it. And it works really well for following the contours of the land. Uh, we don't have any pulse crops this year, but it would work amazing getting down low for those pulse crops. How do combines work? Oof. Okay, I did a horrible job at explaining this last year. Uh, first of all, your header, sickle, cuts your wheat, your reel pulls it in, drapers, conveyor belts basically, the feeder house, rotor, big cylinder, it spins really fast, concaves, rotor grinds your wheat against your concaves, threshes the wheat, separates the grain from your straw and your chaff, straw gets chucked out the back sieves shake back and forth falls down through your sieves chaff and sent out the back fan in your combine blow some of that lighter stuff out grain tank that's your really bad really fast explanation of a combine with matthew 